Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. Uh, just watched the Seahawks. Don't even really want to mention it, actually. It's uh, pretty demoralizing to be up by 17 points in the second half and then to lose the game in overtime. Pretty crazy. Um, I'm officially not expecting much from the Seahawks this season. They're off to a two and three start. Not looking good. NFC West, the Cardinals, even the Rams are looking kind of tough. I just don't think it's going to happen. The Packers look completely unbeatable in the NFC so far. I don't know. I don't want to talk about football because it's depressing, but I will talk about several other things. Actually, here's another thing that's very depressing. Another thing that happened today, I woke up this morning, um, pretty early because I wanted to do some cleaning up, cleaning up and stuff around the house. And I did a little bit of that and then I wanted to take a shower. The game was going to be on. I wanted to kind of get cleaned up and ready to go because there were errands I had to run immediately after the game. So I took a shower. You don't need all this background information. Um, and as I was getting out of the shower, naked, you know, that's usually the way you are when you were showering, I heard a horrible thing from outside down on the street. Basically, I heard the squealing of brakes, the crush of an impact, and then a dog yelping in horrible, horrible pain and then the dog's owner screaming at the top of her lungs. Basically, a dog got hit out on the street, and if I had been down there, I'm sure I would have tried to do something to help, but I was naked in my apartment, and uh, I heard other people down on the street, so obviously some people had come to help, but it's such a horrible sound. It's the kind of thing where you sort of get that weird... Um, instinctive feeling there's certain sounds that can trigger not even an adrenaline rush because i didn't feel like i was pumped up with pumped up with adrenaline or anything but just this this signal of something has happened and i don't know if i can explain this properly obviously something has happened because i could hear a dog get hit by a car but the certain combination of the squealing of the dog the shrieking of the woman it sends your senses into this weird heightened state where you're like, something's gonna happen, I need, I might need to do something, or something else is going, it, I don't know, you're just in this weird ready state. And then I didn't end up doing anything, and so you have this kind of weird come down. It's hard to explain, it's almost, it kind of feels like when you're about to perhaps fight somebody, almost that fight or flight sort of instinct, but not quite the same. But I felt that, like that heightened, like, oh, something's, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, and then, Nothing ended up happening, but it sounded awful. Like just the dog, I think the dog died from what I could hear. I couldn't see anything down on the street. Always very sad. So now that we've started the Sunday Smoke Off with two very uplifting stories, let me look through my notebook here. I had some things written down. Um, things I wanted to mention. If you guys watched my review of La Brumouse, Brumouse, I don't know how to pronounce that still, it was the Semwa tobacco from the Ardennes region of Belgium. Very interesting tobacco. I posted my review of that this last week. And in the review, I mentioned how though the tobacco comes extremely dry, it is supposed to be smoked in that very, very dry state. Speaking of dry, my mouth was very dry. I had to wet my whistle there. And basically it's kind of it's tobacco that's so dry, if it were any other tobacco, I wouldn't think of smoking it um, with that moisture content or lack thereof. But it works fine with the Semwa tobacco. But I had mentioned in the review how I was going to experiment with rehydrating some. So I took just a little bit, not a, not a huge amount, and put it in, a, in a, can, a canning jar so I could get a tight seal on it and put one of those little button humidifiers in there, popped it in and let it, it took a few days for even that small amount of tobacco to rehydrate just because it was so dry to begin with. And I tried a bowl, it was not good. Don't rehydrate your Semois tobacco, don't rehydrate your La Brumeuse from Tobac Manil. It's not good at all. I got it up to even still slightly on the dry side of what I, can, what I would consider a proper moisture content 
and it was disgusting. I could not believe how much the flavor changed. It basically tasted like, you could still sort of taste the underlying like flavor profile of the tobacco. There was still a little bit of that there, but then it was as though the whole thing had just been doused in salt water. And I don't just mean salt or water that you've poured some table salt in and mixed up. I mean like rank from the beach, tide has been out for a while, salt water. Like you put a, a, you got a mass of like kelp or something and put it in your mouth and sucked on it. And there were all sorts of weird microorganisms and like fish shit floating in there at the same time. It was disgusting. Don't do that. Don't rehydrate your Semwa tobacco. Public service announcement here. <clears throat> Other news, I had a fairly major computer snafu going on this weekend. Um, I had recently upgraded to Windows 10 on my main computer, which I use for editing videos and things like that and had some weird issues with some files that were kind of becoming hidden or disappearing. And I was kind of working through all that thing. And then lo and behold, I won't get into all the technical aspects of it, but basically some issues occurred and I lost a bunch of stuff. And one of the main things I lost was the part two of the rifle that I was building. I was gonna post that this week. I lost that. I lost the edited version of that, which was almost completed. I still have all the raw footage, but as I mentioned in part one, all the footage had been built up over months of me, you know, finding parts and it, it was all disjointed and it was something that required a lot of editing to make into a, uh, into a somewhat coherent video. And I had spent quite a bit of time editing that because I had gotten the subsequent or supplementary photo, uh, photographs to put in there and I had recorded some voiceover stuff on top of those. and. It took quite a while and now that's gone. And so I basically have to start from scratch and re-edit the whole thing down. So that's kind of annoying. So that video doesn't get to post um, as soon as I had hoped it would. It will post hopefully this coming week. But I also got some other things in the mail. Some of you may have seen my review for um, the ZLYC notebooks. They were sort of billed as kind of alternatives to the Midori Traveler's notebook. Well, ZLYC was in contact with me again, and they sent me a couple other things to review. First of all, they just sent me another journal set right here. And it's kind of stuff that we covered in the first review. That was sort of an overview of the products they have on offer, some of the journals they have. But it's another traveler style journal as seen here, but it's more of a supple leather, this full size one that they sent me. And then it's basically a, a set. So it comes with the full size, a passport size and then has a little pen case or pencil case. Um, so I'll try to get a review of this posted in the coming weeks. Let me throw it back in its little satchel. But they also sent me something pretty interesting. Let's see if I can extract it from under here. They sent me this. And this is what they call, let me read the full title here. <coughs> Get it in camera. The ZLYC Leather Vintage Removable Padded Camera Messenger Shoulder Bag for DSLR Camera and Lens Brown. Again, a mouthful with the titling there, but this is billed as a camera bag. And it's kind of a over the shoulder satchel, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. I was very surprised actually that they sent me this for review if i pop it open here um it's got this padded compartment inside for a dslr camera so you'd put the camera body and then maybe a lens there all sorts of different ex room for accessories and stuff i've got some stuff in here i'm using it as a camera bag now for my um, video camera just to try it out but you can pop this divider out Nothing is on camera. Pop the divider out. And then you have just a very roomy satchel. Lots of, I keep hitting my microphone. This is not going well. Lots of interior pockets, lots of storage room and stuff. And the leather is a pretty nice leather, it seems like. So 
I'm going to be putting this bag through its paces for the next week or two, maybe. We'll see how long it takes me to decide whether or not I've, uh, you know, fully put it through its paces. And I kind of will look at the durability, some of the hardware and stuff like that if I use this around for a while. You can look forward to a review of this <clears throat> ZOYC Leather Vintage Removable Padded Camera Messenger Shoulder Bag for DSLR Camera and Lens Brown in the coming weeks. I have also been partaking a little bit of the McClelland Christmas Cheer 2015 blend. This is a Virginia blend, as it always is for the Christmas Cheer. Um, they do a limited edition tobacco blending for every Christmas season, usually sourcing some Virginias that they find interesting that they think are pretty cool. Um, blend it all together. And I've had two bowls of that so far, I think. And so far it's good, it's pretty tasty. I'm not smoking that right now though. I'm actually smoking a little bit of GLP's jackknife plug in my Peterson Silver Mounted Army. This is the pipe I call Phil because Phil has a fill right there. That's why he's named Phil. Um, enjoying the jackknife plug. I've had a jar of this for a while and it's not something I think about smoking a lot, but whenever I do, I enjoy it. It's a pretty full flavored, pretty high nicotine content blend though. So you have to kind of be prepared for it. Maybe after a meal, I just had lunch recently. So this is setting rather well. Yeah, pretty tasty stuff. But I think that's pretty much it for announcements for this week's Sunday Smoke. I need to get this uploaded. I'm running a little bit behind this weekend and I need to get re-editing some of the video stuff that got lost in that computer snafu. But I should always remember to thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for leaving comments. Thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you definitely should. You'll get updates on when new videos posts, post and such. But for now, I think that's about it for this week's Sunday Smoke. I've been your good friend, Bradley, right here. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. Good day. Mm-hmm.